Sorry, just had to start the recording here. Um, Mendenoma Health Alliance is a community-based uh, organization located in Wallala. We serve um, the Mendenoma Coast all the way up from Irish Beach in Mendocino County down through Timber Cove in Sonoma County. And we provide um, expanded access to healthcare information and programs in our community. And so, um, this is this educational workshop we're providing today is one of those programs that we offer. And um, so to get started, I just wanna get every, give everybody a brief introduction of who our um, host is today. Uh, we have Jill Nusenau. I'm gonna unmute you real quick, Jill. Okay, perfect. Perfect, all right. <laughs> Jill is a registered dietitian, culinary educator, and cookbook author. She's been creating award-winning recipes for more than 30 years and has written four cookbooks that are very popular in our community. Jill has done cooking demonstrations in farms and fields, at farmers markets, and throughout the Sonoma County library system. She retired from the culinary department at Santa Rosa Junior College in December 2019 after teaching for 30 years. Uh, she is a plant-based Instapot expert and loves helping people, especially families, learn how to optimize their health through better cooking and eating. And Jill has a website. It's theveggiequeen.com. And um, so Jill will be focusing today's lesson on nutrition centered or, and, and a cooking demonstration separate, centered around hypertension. And right before we get started, I am going to launch a quick poll for everybody to fill out. So you'll see some questions pop up on your screen. It's quick, four questions, they're all anonymous, and we're just trying to learn how you heard about our session today. So I'll go ahead and do that and give you guys just a minute um, to fill out. All right, Jill, and if you're curious, we're asking everybody how they heard oh, about I, oh, I see that. OK, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give another 20 seconds. It looks like lots of people have answered it. All right, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and end that poll. Thank you, everybody, for participating in that. We will have one other quick poll at the very end um, with additional questions. But without further ado, I will hand it over to Jill. Um, thank you for well, being here. Thank you. Thank you. Let me close the poll so I can see. Um, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to use one camera today because Oh my, just because. Anyway, I'm gonna be using two Instant Pots, a food processor, and uh, what else? Oh, and blender. So I got a lot of equipment going on. Um, so it may get a little crazy. So I have a PowerPoint to show you in between, just to break things up a bit. So I, I wanna, I'm gonna just mention that hypertension is a huge issue in this country. And that is because it is related to heart disease. It's related to stress. And so I think it's really important that if you have high blood pressure or ever had, that you really pay attention to it. And it's not just because it's, it's a chronic disease and that's the problem, is you can make it go away. You can do all the things that you need to do and you can make it go away. So. I think that's really important that you realize that you can take control of this if you want. And in the PowerPoint, I'm gonna go over it, but what I did today is I chose two soups to make because soup is one of the highest sodium foods there is. And so I'm making a Provencal lentil soup with additions. You gotta find some of those additions, but um, also a potato leek soup, with asparagus. So I'm gonna start with the potato leek soup 
And I have to tell you, right when I was printing my recipes, I put them on the countertop, not realizing that it was wet. So my recipes are a little messy, which is fine. But I wanna talk to you a bit about leeks because this is their time of year or getting to be. This leek, five something, this leek is a couple of feet long. And what you wanna know about this is that you can eat the green. You also wanna know that you wanna cut leeks down the middle and you always wanna open them up because they get dirt in there. Sometimes it's mud in there, but not this year, because here in California, it's really dry. So you can use the white and the green. People often ask why do the you know traditional potato leek soup not use the green? That's because it's French. And if it's French, they don't like the green. So, um, just know that. So this here in this bowl, which is about oh, a good four cups of green and white. Um, I'm going to tilt this down a bit because I'm not that tall and I'll just move back. Um, so anyway, this is green and white and it makes delicious soup. So this is going to go into my instant pot. Um, actually, my pot is a meal fee. So I'm going to use the bigger pot for this, I think. Uh, no, maybe I'll use the smaller pot. Well, I'll use the bigger pot. Anyway, so I put that all in and I get it sauteing because it needs to do that. Now, I decided to add asparagus and, and I will be giving Micheline the recipes. So if you want the actual recipe, you will be able to have it. So this is asparagus season, obviously. Um, and the thing about asparagus is it's not only really good for you, it's also a diuretic. And if you have high blood pressure, that helps draw things out of your system. So asparagus is funny because these are all the same length. And if you've ever seen asparagus growing in a field, one is this big, one is that big. So they're not all the same length, but when they go to the grocery store, they cut them to be the same length. And you never know which the tough part, so you always want to get that off. So I'm just going to get that off of there, and I'm going to put it in a bowl that I have. Well, I'll put it in a container. So I also have a little more leek, which I'm going to add to that and just let it cook. So I have no oil in my pot. You don't need oil in there. Oil adds calories that you may or may not need. Um, I like to break these you because it's therapy for me, not because I have to, but um, it just gives me a, something to do so that I can keep myself focused. So today when I had nothing to do, ha, 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 I um, need some stock and stock is something I want to talk to you about because you can buy low sodium stock. You want to read the label. You want to see how much salt they've added. And one teaspoon of salt has about 2,200 milligrams of sodium. And one teaspoon is all you're supposed to have for the whole day in all your food. So you really wanna pay attention to what's happening. And some canned soups in one cup of soup will have somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 or more milligrams of sodium. So you really wanna pay attention to soup. So when I make my stock, it's zero, and I mean zero salt in it, none. And in fact, I made this the other night for my parents-in-law, and my father-in-law said it's some magic elixir that helped him sleep all night, which is fascinating. Um, I don't believe that to be true, but he loved it, and I had zero oil in it, and if any salt, very, very little. And I didn't add the asparagus because my husband doesn't like it, but he's not eating this, so I don't care. So you don't have to add asparagus if you don't want, but potato leek soup is something that I make quite often and it's very thick and it's delicious. So I'm gonna just saute this leek or these leeks just a little bit. I'm gonna show you my stock because I for some reason, everybody wants to see my stock. Um, so I made uh, almost three quarts of stock. And this was made from ends and pieces of certain things. 
And the certain things are onions, red onions, leeks, um, carrots, mushrooms, some bay leaves. So it's just very pure. I wish you could smell it. It smells delicious. And it doesn't have anything weird in it. It's made with organic vegetables that I had. And so the things that I don't put in here are equally as important. So I don't put in um, cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, kale, cabbage. Those don't go in because they tend to get stinky. And nobody wants stinky stuff, as far as I know. So that's what I'm going to use for this soup. Now, I have, because I just did that with asparagus, I have the ends of the asparagus, and I'm going to put those in the next soup, and I can make a pure asparagus stock if I want it, because I have that. So just remember, your stock can be whatever you want it to be. I also want to remind you that in the Instant Pot, if you put anything hot in there, it gets hotter under pressure. So anything hot will get hotter. So these are cooking along and I'm gonna let them cook just for a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let them just keep cooking. I'm actually gonna start the other soup too because I like to get things moving along. So. This soup is actually a conglomeration. It is an actual recipe from my cookbook, The New Fast Food, and it calls for leeks. It also calls for garlic and bay leaves and carrots and celery. And I wanna show you a bunch of lentils and then sun-dried tomatoes and artichoke hearts, which is the interesting in here. And because my husband is not eating this and he doesn't like mushrooms and mushrooms are a great source of potassium and i'm going to talk more about potassium i cut up some mushrooms and i'm going to put them in now how i'm going to fit all this in this little pot i'm not quite sure but i'm going to try and figure it out um, i'm going to make half the recipe because otherwise it won't fit in the pot so i'm going to start here with saute and put in the leeks so I'm going to use far less leeks in this because I can. Um, I also have the rest of the leek from before. So I'm going to cut a little bit of this and put it in. And like I said, I decided not to use my camera where you can see me cutting because it's not that exciting at this point and it just takes a little more than I have available today. So I'm all about getting done. And that's what's going to get it done. So these are going in. So I got those. I'm going to add some carrots to this. And I wanted to show you, I got some of those colored carrots. Do not make stock out of these. They make disgusting stock. Um, and just a regular carrot. So I have those here along with some celery. I'm going to put all that in. And this soup is going to be very full. The other thing I wanted to tell you that you could put in, if you have it and want to, oh, that's good, is saffron. It's expensive, but it's really good. And it's often used in Mediterranean cooking. So you could add that. All right, so I'm gonna let that cook for a bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my potato leek soup, go and add some stock to the pot. And I'm going to turn off saute. I'm going to give this a really good stir. So all I have in there is leeks. And now I'm going to add my potatoes. And I'm gonna do one more potato. I did two potatoes. I'm gonna do one more good sized potato because I have it and because I love potatoes in my potato leek soup. And I like to use Yukon Gold potatoes because I think they are the most tender. But if you grow potatoes or know someone that does, then use those because those will work really well. So Joan, I just, yes. Sorry, someone had a question about earlier. You mentioned um, when you put something hot in the Instapot, it gets hotter under pressure. Did you mean spicy hot or temperature hot? Spicy hot. So if it's not chilly, it's gonna get hotter. And that's what you wanna be careful of. 
is making it too hot. I have to tell you, I have made something definitely too hot. So when you put that chili in, taste it and then figure out what you're gonna do. So I didn't put in, it says four large russet or Yukon gold potatoes and six cups of vegetable broth. I should have definitely done this the other way. I'm not gonna switch it now. But. So I'm not gonna put in the whole six cups. I'm gonna basically cover the potatoes and then I am going to add the asparagus, which I have right here. I put it in a little container. So that's about a cup of asparagus. I'm gonna turn this on and let me make sure. I know I, I might not have put everything in. I know exactly what I didn't put in, which is time. And what people say you can't have too much time and that's probably true. And I always add thyme and often bay leaves to my potato leek soup. And I like to put in a lot because I think it gives it a really good flavor. And what you want to remember is when you're using herbs and spices, you don't need to use as much salt. And I think that's really important. And it calls for a couple of bay leaves, which I'm going to find right here. So I'm gonna put those in. And then this is gonna get just four minutes at pressure. So I wanna make sure I can get those bay leaves out. So this is gonna go on high pressure for four minutes and I will let it do a natural release. So that's the one that's like super easy. I got that on, it's going. The other one has a lot more ingredients in it. One of which is garlic, which I absolutely love. And so, I have a special tool here called the garlic twist. You don't have to use one of these. You can use your garlic press. This is a funny, not ha ha time of year for garlic. The garlic is wanting to grow. Now this is a time of year in certain places you will be getting green garlic. And that is a special treat. Um, right now, we don't have our farmer's market open, but it will open in a month and a half. And I'm really excited because then I can get more of the things that I'd like to get. Um, but for now, the store will have to suffice. This garlic is growing. I, you probably can see that. That is the growing part. So generally, I recommend that you cut it down the middle and you take out the part that is growing. This doesn't even go in my stock because it tends to be a little bit bitter. So this is a good sized clove of garlic. So I'm probably only going to use two. And you have to remember, people don't often remember garlic is a seasonal crop. And this is the time of year for alliums. And garlic is one of them. Onions, sweet garlic, all really good for you, good for your gut, and good flavoring agents. So these are going to go into my garlic twist. If you have a press, you can put it in there. And let me just see what else I've got. Ugh. Oh, you know what? Oh no, I got it in there. All right. So I have, I added the celery and carrots. I'm gonna add the garlic and then I'm gonna put in some herbs because herbs are so good for you. They're high in antioxidants. You don't even know all of the, what they contain. So the garlic's gonna go in. And then I'm gonna show you my lentils because they're kind of exciting. And then I'm gonna have to put in my mushrooms because they're at home. They are. And, my, and you only can fill the pot two thirds full. So I'm like just about there. I didn't even put the lentils in. It's supposed to be half full. And you know what? You're not here. And if I don't eat it, it's gonna be okay. So. Um, the other ingredient, other than the lentils, are sun-dried tomatoes, which I put down here, right here. So, you know, I didn't read the package of the sun-dried tomatoes, but there's 30 milligrams, 20 milligrams of sodium in two tablespoons. And so what I didn't know about that is that sometimes they are cured with salt. So always check the 
package to see. You know, always check every package that you get and read what's in it. Now, the soup is also going to get artichoke hearts. And I read four different cans of artichoke hearts today. And this has uh, 373 milligrams for a half a can. And people always go, oh, can you take it and rinse it? Of course you can. However, you can't really get the sodium out of the vegetable. So I wouldn't count on that because it's really not gonna come out. It's in there for good. So here we go. I'm gonna add the bay leaves. Otherwise, I'm not gonna remember. Okay, bay leaves in there. Here we go with the lentils. Now you don't need to remember this. These are golden lentils and they have no, no outer shell. So they're gonna get really thick. These are shelled red lentils. They're orange. These are a conglomeration of French green lentils and crimson lentils that I accidentally mixed together. And so is the other container because I accidentally put them in and I'm just gonna add them to here. These are regular green lentils. And then these are black lentils and they're often called beluga black. And I'm just gonna put those in there, but not all of them because I feel like I have enough lentils in there and I still need to add my stock. So the recipe calls for, Oh, five cups, and I'm not gonna put in five cups. I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna actually measure, because that's a good thing to do. When you're pressure cooking especially, you really wanna measure. Okay, so that's one. Somebody sent a message recently, turn that off and put it on pressure, because it's gonna get six minutes. Somebody asked if they didn't wash their vegetables and what should they do? And at the end of the jar is like some soil and stuff. You can just pour that out. You don't have to use it. Um, but you also don't have to worry that you're going to be eating something that you shouldn't be eating. You're, it's not going to hurt you, especially if you bought organic. So let's see. So I put in two, put in two and a half. And then when it comes out, I'll see how it looks and I'll add the artichoke cards. So this is gonna be, oh, I'm even gonna add those. The red ones and the yellow ones, which are sometimes called golden lentils. So I have all of my lentils in. I do wanna tell you about saffron. Not a rock song, I'm just wild about saffron. Um, and I am wild about saffron. I have to tell you, it is an intoxicating spice used a lot in Indian cooking, Mediterranean cooking, and it's expensive. Um, I don't have it in my pocket. I often do, but it is expensive. I can tell you that for a fact. I have a little container here, a little bit, and then I have a much larger amount. They say it only lasts a certain amount of time. I have to tell you, I've had this for a long time. It's dried and it's not activated. So if it's like that, what you could do is you can, and I'm not gonna do it. If you're gonna use saffron, you wanna take it and you wanna get the threads. Often it will say, you know, this number of threads, which are these, put it in hot water and activate it and then add it to your food. I used it yesterday. I made a, cur uh, spiced quinoa and I put the um, saffron in it. it was delicious so if you like saffron use saffron if you don't like saffron don't use saffron you know it's just what you like so I think that's important I'm going to let these things cook and I, I think what I'll do is I'll get the um, artichoke hearts ready and then when the soup is ready for it it's going to be like craziness here, but I can do it. So I wouldn't generally make two soups in one night, but you could make the soup and you can freeze it. I think that's really important. 
And, you know, I was hoping to get frozen artichoke hearts, but I didn't. So I had to buy canned. And the frozen ones are probably have less sodium in them. And I'm not going to put that many in. So I have, I'm going to show you. A half a can is a lot of artichoke hearts. And if you don't like them, don't put them in. That's the important thing. So this is the can. Maybe this is how much I'm going to use. And these are quartered. And what I might do with these is I might actually cut them up a little bit more, at least separate the tops and bottoms, because I don't want them to be too chunky, but I do want them to be in there. I also have a recipe for Provencal lentil stew. And um, I really, um, I was thought about doing that, but that was a little more complicated. So the nice thing is before your pot comes to pressure, you can add whatever you didn't add, which in this case is a little bit of spice, which I wanna add and I like it to be cooking in there. So I have some rosemary. I'm just cooking up. I have some herbs de Provence. And I'm going to add a little bit of thyme too. Because one can never have too much thyme. Although the funny thing is, I filled my container and I ended up with too much thyme. I couldn't finish. I wanted to get rid of the bag, but I couldn't. And the other thing, if you don't have fresh parsley, and I do, um, is if you have dried parsley, you can add that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that. And the other thing, let's see, I wanted to show you because I have this freeze dried organic garlic and I also use um, dried garlic, organic garlic. This is freeze dried, it's a little different, but you can use dried spices without any issue and they work really well. So that's that. Now, what I think I'll do is, I think I will go over my PowerPoint. So can I share the screen, Micheline? Yes, you, you should be able to see share screen at the very bottom with a green button. Okay, I got it. Perfect. Okay, so let me just get my, oh, I can't see. Well, I guess I'm gonna do it like this. There we go, slideshow from the beginning. Okay, there we go. So I just want you to know that I just heard something today. There's a, a well-known doctor, his name is Dr. Michael Roizen. He's written 21 books and it was fascinating to hear him. He was talking about all kinds of things. And one of the things he talked about um, just so you know, my pot with the potato soup is at pressure. So that's a good sign. And it will beep at me at some point. So, you know, he talked a little bit about hypertension and he talked about chronic disease. He also said that only 5% of Americans are getting the fiber they need. And I was like, wow, that's pretty low. And I just heard another doctor say 0.5% of people are really eating healthy. So I was like, oh, you know, we have a problem. We have a very big problem. And I think one of the problems is people think they're eating healthy, but may not be. And I'm not going to define healthy eating, but I am going to say that I went out for brunch the other day with my family for Easter. And I was, you know, I wish I could say I was surprised at what the food was, but it was not what I would consider even remotely healthy food. And, you know, I know that they don't eat that way every day. And I hope it's Easter, but there's also Christmas and New Year's and Valentine's Day and, Thanksgiving and you know, uh, Memorial Day and July 4th. So there's a good number of holidays. So I think it's important to like get like at least 80% of your eating to be healthy, whatever that is. And I'm talk a little bit about that. So hypertension, there are many factors that contribute, but mostly I'm going to talk about your diet. I can't dismiss the importance of maintaining an ideal body weight and getting exercise because getting exercise where you're moving really can help lower your blood pressure. And the other thing is stress. 
And that really affects your blood pressure. It also affects your life. And you have to really think like, how is this affecting me? And, you know, I, I used to teach stress management. And what I will tell you is we would teach people that, uh, how, you know, it's about how you think of something, not how it really is. So if you're getting all stressed out, and I can tell you because I've been in the car a few times lately and, you know, you can get stressed out about the people around you in the cars. But let me tell you that you have no control over what they're doing. So it's a time to actually take some deep breaths and to kind of calm yourself down. And I think this is a big part of what's missing in our culture is like really taking the time to learn how to settle yourself so that you're not stressed about everything. It's too easy to get stress. And truly, you know, our stress is induced by us mostly. Of course, you, know, you might have a boss asking for things. You can only do what you can do. I mean, I, you know, I'm talking about this. I'm thinking about my husband who he is like Mr. Stress, right? I'm like, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. So just like learn how to deal with it. And it's all a matter of perception. And so really think about what it is that's causing you stress and if you can really affect it because it really matters. So everything you do matters. If you don't make time for your wellness, you'll be forced to make time for your illness. And you want to read that again and you want to keep that in mind. And it does take time. It's, you know, people like, well, it takes time to cook healthy food. Take time to go to the doctor. Does it take time to wait for the doctor? Does it take time to, you know, to have to make appointments and, and show up for your appointments? Of course it does. So for me, I, and for other people, and what Dr. Royson talked about, which was fascinating, I was so happy that someone invited me to this. He said in the next 10 years, people are gonna learn how 90 is gonna be the new 60 because it's going really fast in terms of what we know, how to keep people from aging and how your body healthy in these 14 different areas, which he didn't mention, but he did have his chef cook demo. And it was something easy that I would show you how to make. And I thought, oh, I could change it. I could do something really similar. But it was a dip and it used ingredients that I would use. And I thought, that's really great. And he showed how to dip broccoli in it and so on. So just remember, you can stay healthier. You can reverse certain diseases by taking care of yourself. Drinking lots of water too. So I'm just going to do that. Here's the real key. Avoid processed foods. Does anybody know how much sodium you need? Well, I already mentioned it, that, that it's around 2,000 milligrams. And you want to think about what you get in a can, a bottle, or jar, or even frozen foods. Because it can add up. You want to read the labels. Next, you want to out where are you getting sodium from? And then you want to make choices to lower your intake. And uh, the doctor talked about how adding, and this is not related to hypertension, but just in general, it makes a lot of sense, how adding two servings a day of vegetables, they did a study and they found that it reduced the incidence of breast cancer by 40%, which is quite amazing. But the recommendation for fruits and vegetables, I think now is somewhere between five and 10 and different ones. And most people are not getting these. So think about when you could add more. So what you can do, I already told you, read labels or avoid foods with labels. I once had a guy who came to a class that I taught many years ago and he said, oh, I'm just spending all my time reading those labels. And I said, how about if you eat foods without labels? And he was like, oh. And it was just kind of a revelation. And, you know, yes, you'll find labels on things that may not have to be labels. But, you know, eat more fresh food, especially vegetables. Vegetables have some kind of magical compound, which is why I took the name the Veggie Queen, because I'm all about getting you to eat more vegetables. And then also eat more high potassium foods. And there are a whole lot of them. Um, potatoes, oranges, white 
is um, sweet potatoes, winter squash. I mean, all the same foods that I will tell you to eat for other parts of your health. And this is the whole thing. I have been saying this stuff for many years um, and it's all the same. It hasn't changed and it's eat more of these foods. People always think bananas, bananas are not the highest in potassium. Lemons and oranges really are grapefruits. I mean, there's a whole range of foods high in potassium, not just one. You go, I ate my banana today. I can tell you many people are like, I had my banana. Okay, well maybe that's the only fruit or vegetable you had the whole day. That is not good. So really think about how you can up your fruit and vegetable intake. It helps your gut, it helps your whole body. And you know, when we think about it, the whole body is a system. It's not just your brain, it's not just your gut, it's not just your kidneys, it's not just your blood pressure, it's your heart, it's everything. So you can't separate it out. What's good for one thing is usually good for another. So I thought I would review the highest sources of sodium, which is part of salt, and they're not in any particular order, but cheese, especially the soft cheeses, especially cheese like feta, tends to be very high in salt. It's a salted cheese. Canned food, especially soup, which I mentioned, pickles and some olives, and uh, cured meats and cold cuts. You know, if I had my druthers, they would be off the list for everybody, for everything, unless they were homemade and you ate them hardly ever. But if you're buying them at the store, they're likely full of sodium. Another one is sauces and salad dressing. Salad, that's why I'm going to make the salad to show you how easy it can be. And I have a very simple salad dressing that I make that I actually just got my husband to say yes to. Um, which is pretty amazing. And so it's very similar to that, not exactly the same. Fast food we know is not so great for you. And I would like to add to that with fast food, a lot of these processed plant-based foods are not so good for you either. You have to read the label. And any restaurant food, and I can tell you this because I taught at a culinary school, chefs are taught salt, cook, salt, cook, salt, cook and then taste and add more salt. And so if you've ever watched some of the cooking shows and watch them, they're adding a lot of salt to the food. And one of my pet peeves is when I eat out, if I get soup, I eat the soup, but it's so salty and I am thirsty for like four to six to eight hours later. So most restaurant food is salty. We are deceived when it comes to food because you ask anyone, what the saltiest food is at McDonald's, most or for wherever, they'll say French fries. It's not true. And I'm going to tell you, if you're going to add salt, you want to add it on top. You can add it at the table. You can get a salt grinder and just add a little bit. You can just pinch it in. You taste it then. But if it's in the food, you don't taste it. And so French fries are actually one of the lowest sodium things at a fast food restaurant. It's just that they sit on top of the grease. And so you taste it more. Canned vegetables, there are only a few canned vegetables I use. That is canned tomatoes, and I buy the no salt added when I can. Um, canned corn occasionally, and what else? I don't know that there's anything else. Those are probably the two that I have, and I prefer frozen for many reasons. They tend to have less salt. Frozen meals. Now, the freezer section of the supermarket has grown exponentially and not to our benefit. So if you're like, oh, I'll just grab that frozen meal, you may not be doing yourself any good because they tend to be very high in sodium. I used to do some work for Amy's Kitchen, which is like the organic, healthier frozen meals, and some of them are healthier, but the pushback was always with the low sodium meals. People didn't like them because they didn't taste the way they expected. And what happens is we develop a salt tooth. And then when you taste real food, you're like, oh, that doesn't taste good. That's because you're not used to what the food tastes like. You're used to what the salt tastes like. And then anything with a label is going to be in something or anything that says sea salt on it and read that label because it tends to be quite salty. So that's the highest sources of sodium, ones to really pay attention to.
And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions now about um, this part, the, the actual talk part, I'm happy to answer them. I'm going to get together my, um, my immersion blender because I think the potato, oops, potato soup will be ready for blending sometime soon. And so anybody have any questions? I'm gonna close this out because I don't need it. Let's see, where am I closing it? Uh, oh. Do you see the stop, stop. sharing? I'm getting good. <laughs> I'm really getting it. Anybody have any questions about any of that? Because it's it's not a little bit of information it's actually quite a bit of information and I want to make sure everybody understands it because it's, it may be easier to talk about it than it is to practice. And I have to say that I didn't grow up eating a lot of salt. So cutting out salt for me is not a hard thing, but for some people it's harder than for other people. And I'm not saying never have it, but did I tell you that 77% or over 75% of the salt that most people get is from processed foods, not from the food that you eat at home, not from the food you make yourself. So it's important to keep that in mind. Now here, my other pot, which is ready. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, cause I'm gonna wait for the potato soup is I'm gonna get together the, the thing that needs the food processor, which is the, okay. Uh, which is the salad. And I have to say, this salad totally amazed me. I generally don't like fennel. It's a really good for you vegetable, but I don't like the anise taste. So, I had this, it had beets in it, but I'm gonna put carrots in it and I'm gonna see how it is because I wanna know. So I'm gonna show you, it's so easy if you have a food processor with a grating blade, which I do have. So it's not, and if you don't have one, you're gonna be grating for a very long time. Come out. You know, I don't like when my equipment challenges me. It's doing. This is the S blade. This is coming out. Um, and the other blades going in. So if you have a food processor, I hope you do because it, I think it's easy for people to use it. There's things that you may not know about your food processor. One, most of them have a stem. Some are attached. You just put it in, you lift the thing and you turn it. There is a cell on the top of your food processor. This lines up with the spindle in here. So these may be things that you're like, oh, I didn't realize that. Cause it took me a while to realize that. And then you put it in. And then what you do is you get your food so that it is the size of the chute. Now all the chutes differ. And so, um, this is a fennel bulb and I didn't give it a rinse, but I'm going to right now. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to cut it. I'm going to take off the bottom. I would not put this in your stock or and I will not go in my stock because I don't want my stock tasting like fennel. Um, but I am going to taste a piece. Okay, it's all right. I'll live. Okay, I'm gonna throw that top part away. And this is gonna get grated. Um, and it's funny, because in today's newspaper, local newspaper on the front page was fennel. I was like, oh, I guess I'm in the right place at the right time. Um, did not do a recipe like this at rose fennel, which some people really love. So this is how hard this is. Just put it in and go like that. And it's grated. 
And I just love doing that. So, because it's so easy. And then what I like to do is I like to take the back of the knife, this part, and I like to scrape my carrot because it just takes a little bit off the edge. And I thought the red carrot would look nice. And just so you know, because my dietitian hat is always on, the deeper, darker color, fruit or vegetable or grain or bean, the more nutrition it has. So those black lentils have slightly more nutrition than the other color. And again, so my carrots are going to go into my stock, even though they will have some color. I'm only going to put in a little bit. These are going to go in. And I think I'll put some of the orange carrot in and the high apple, and I'm going to grate that too. And then I'm going to get the ingredients together for it. So you can see likely that I'm using quite a bit of vegetables here. Um, and that is, oh, I could probably put my apple in at the same time. So you just don't want the core of the apple. The rest of the apple can go in. I think I can fit the whole apple in there. It's called efficiency. You definitely want to be efficient in the kitchen. And that's why I do a lot of freezing. Oh, is it a pole? No, there shouldn't be. I see something on my screen. Oh, maybe I should just shut it. I did. It's okay. It's technology. Okay. Okay. So, this is the cooked. I'm going to take out a bowl for this. It's always good to put your food in a bowl. Okay. So this is what, and now I have to say, when it had the beets in it, it looked way different. And you can use any kind of beets you have. If you love beets, use them. If you don't love beets. Now, the other thing is, I had said, because this was inspired by a woman that I know, Shelowitz, and she said, well, you know, you could cook this. So I thought that was interesting. Now, if any of you know me, you know I'm likely to ferment it because that's more my style, but I'm not going to do either. I am going to get my lemon. As soon as I discover where I put that lemon. That's not my lemon. Here it is. So I have my lemon and I want to show you because I took out my microplane grater, which is right here. You want to use some kind of zester when you do this. Okay, you want to zest your lemon. Now this is a Meyer lemon and lemon zest has anti-cancer properties and it tastes great and it helps you eliminate salt. And so does lemon juice, which is why I'm a huge citrus fan. Oranges, lemons and limes, organic, get this treatment. And then I will get one of my favorite tools here, which is the lemon squeezer which I honestly didn't know how to use when I first got it. It's many years ago, almost 20, someone gave it to me. And what I did is I put the lemon in like that, but the flat side goes down. Okay, so I got the lemon in there, lemon juice. I'm just gonna stir it up. And then I'm gonna add a couple of other things, one of which I didn't take out, but I'm gonna do right now. 
Now, I'm going to add some mustard. I, I have not read the label of this, but I'm going to. It has 150 milligrams of sodium in a teaspoon. So that is quite a bit, but I'm not adding any other sodium to this recipe. So I feel pretty good about adding a teaspoon of mustard to this because it adds a lot of flavor. And that's what you want to think of as replacing the flavor in food with other things. And then I have my balsamic vinegar, just plain old balsamic vinegar. Now, if you have white balsamic vinegar, this is going to look a whole lot better, but I'm into the flavor. You could use flavored vinegar if you want. You don't have to use the colored one. They make a white balsamic, which tends to be a little sweet and not my favorite. Let's see. All right. And let me just make sure I got everything in there. This is a super simple recipe and it will last for a number of days. You can add olive oil if you want. Um, and the other thing you can add, which I am gonna add, is some ground black pepper because I think it gives it a little kick. And if you're gonna use pepper, I suggest you grind it fresh because it tastes better. So what I need to do now because I wanna make sure this is tasty, is I am going to get a fork and just tease you a little bit, just to make sure it tastes really good. And if there's anything else you like, like you could easily put parsley in here if you want it to be green. Parsley is actually a so good for you herb. Mm. I can't believe that Holly got me eating fennel. I never thought it would happen. This is super delicious. And it looks pretty. And it would look good with parsley too. So that's that salad. Let's see here. All right. So the pressure's still up on my potato soup, but I have a feeling that I could let the pressure out. Oh. Now this pot has a special pressure release, but it actually wasn't even up. So this is the potato asparagus soup, and I'm going to use my immersion blender. And if you don't have one, get yourself one. It is one of the best tools you can have. Here it goes. Remember, when you're doing this, don't lift it out. I should try to find the bay leaves. One came to the surface, so that's out of there. Now I will tell you, this is not the most beautiful looking soup, but it is good for you, it is nourishing, it is tasty. And if you want it to look more beautiful, you can add parsley because parsley makes things look better, especially if they're not a beautiful color of green. And it tastes great, it tastes really fresh. And I grow parsley, but not that well. So I don't really have enough, I have to buy it. But I suggest that you think about growing it yourself. And herbs are something that is that are so good for you, as well as spices, and do take the place of salt. So I'm gonna ladle some of this into a bowl. Show to you, I think I am gonna garnish it with some parsley, so I can. And then I'm gonna open the lentil soup and see what's happening in there. Now this is pretty suction to the bottom, but if it wasn't and you could lift it out, don't. You will have 
you will paint your kitchen, not the color you want. So when you have this, you, this one has a removable bottom, which comes off. And then what I do is I run that underwater. This motor part doesn't go in the water because that's bad for it. So this part stays as it is. And then let me get a ladle and a bowl. Now I'm not gonna add any salt to this, but if I was, I would put it right on top of the soup. And I do have a few little chunks in there, so I probably will give it another blend. My husband doesn't like any of the chunks. I, on the other hand, love chunks. And if there's like one leak in there, he's like, what's that? I don't know where he grew up that he eats that way. But, um, anyway, so there's the potato leek soup and you can just take some parsley and put it on top. I'm definitely putting it on top of this soup. So maybe I should taste and see what it is. I know it's really hot because it came out of the Instant Pot and it's 250 degrees when it comes out. Mm. That is delicious. It's actually even better with the asparagus in it. Although all my husband will taste is the asparagus, which is almost funny, but not funny. So this pot still has a little bit of pressure in it. So this is the time that I can answer questions about hypertension, good health, the Instant Pot, or anything else. Or maybe you wanna ask a poem or something. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a couple questions. Um, first one is how much vinegar, or excuse me, how much salt is in the vinegar, if there is any? There is no salt in vinegar, none. There shouldn't be. Maybe in some of the flavored vinegars there is, but not in Wheeler vinegar. I'm, I'm actually going to look now that you challenged me. Let's see. Um, it is so low. I mean, I think it's like seven. I mean, there shouldn't be any salt in here whatsoever. But, but with that in mind, I do want to tell you if you buy those, um, the seasoned vinegar, they do add salt to it. They also add sugar. So I always buy plain vinegar. And then if I want to add those other things, I add them. Perfect. And then we just have some comments. Um, you're doing a great job in your small space. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, somebody, Barbara Hayes says, I bet that would be delicious fermented. I believe she was talking about. Oh, the, the um, fennel. You know, it's interesting because there, it would be delicious fermented, but usually you need some kind of cruciferous vegetable and none of those are cruciferous. So I might need to add a little bit of cabbage to that if I were going to ferment it, but I would figure it out. Um, but and let me talk about fermented foods for just a second, because in order to ferment, you have to add salt generally. You can do it without salt, but it's very challenging. So if you need to add salt to that, this isn't that much. So I might add just like a teaspoon of salt, which is 2000 milligrams. Um, and when it comes to the other end, it will be less than that amount of liquid. So I'll show you, I have one here. This is um, a watermelon daikon and something else. And I can't remember what, oh, and it's really messy. Um, so anyway, this probably had maybe a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half of salt in it. And I would only eat a tablespoon or two of this. So let's say it had 3000 grams of sodium. I would only eat, you know, maybe 120th, you know, maybe 150 milligrams of sodium. It's, it's hard to eat a lot of this. I mean, it's delicious, but hard to eat a lot because um, it's very filling. So fermented food, a lot of people are like, oh, it's so salty. Well, 
certain things, yes, pickles are salty. You always want to like look at the bigger picture. So like my um, Provencal stew has olives in it, but it's a quarter cup of olives for the whole stew. So with that in mind, you're not going to be adding that much sodium. And if it gives it this wonderful flavor boost, it's probably worth it because you're not adding salt. You're eating the food as it is. So I think that's really important to keep in mind that it's a whole big picture. It's not just one thing or another. So, all right, let's see how this is doing. I'm really excited for this one because it has things in it that I like that my husband doesn't like. <laughs> and that means I don't have to share it. And I can tell you, I freeze soup often and the key to freezing soup is put it in the amounts that you're gonna use. So remember I use this dish, this has a lid. This is a great thing for soup because it's just the right size. I put a piece of tape on it. I write what it is and the date, and then I can pull it out. And I just recently had my creamy, dreamy zucchini chowder, and it was like kind of at the end of its life. And it was like six months. And I was like, oh, this is so good. It's not any time. It's wonderful to have this in the freezer. So here we go with the lentil soup, which I have really going to be more like lentil stew because I didn't add that much liquid to it but yes it is lentil stew which is fine too and it smells really good and then I have my artichoke hearts that I'm going to add and then this is for sure going to get parsley because I think it needs it and so I'm going to put it in a bowl maybe just the bowl that I took the artichoke hearts out of because my dishwasher's not coming tonight. I have to do it all by myself. Um, the other thing I'm gonna add to this is I'm going to add some green onions because they're kind of in season. Um, they are part of the Allium family and really good for you. So I have some green onions and people often ask with green onions, can you eat the whole thing? And just like leeks, you can eat the whole thing. Now, if a leaf doesn't look so great like that one, that goes into my stock, maybe the end of that one, but the rest of it gets chopped up and will go into the soup. So it's just, you know, you can decide. Um, I'm going to show you what I do with my parsley and I'm gonna put that on. Let me get my green onion here. And this goes into my stock too. I was really torn because sweet potatoes actually have more potassium than regular potatoes. And I was like, oh, I could really use sweet potatoes. But then I couldn't figure out, you know, exactly what I was going to do. But if you love sweet potatoes, eat them to add them to your lentil soup stew because they will be delicious. So here we go. There is the lentil soup stew and it's super hot. So I could take this and I could easily add more stock to it and it would be fine. I'm also going to add some pepper on top. I think that will be yummy. I'm gonna add my green onions. And if you like them a little cooked, just mush them into the what's happening there. And then what I like to do to get my herbs cut up, because it's easier, is to just take them and use a pair of scissors and cut them. And if they don't, and they smell good too. And, I, and it was an interesting thing listening to Dr. Royson and the chef. He was saying, you know, part of what happens when we're cooking is our sense of smell. So you really want to pay attention to like, does that smell good to me? And I think that's why all these years I have not eaten fennel because it doesn't smell good to me, but I want to eat it because I think it's a good for you vegetable and I am willing to now give it a try. So, um, so this is the lentil soup stew. We call it stoop. That's what my husband calls it. 
And smells good to me. You know, and just so you know, you do not have to mix all different colored lentils. You can use just regular green brown. You can use French green lentils. I haven't have had all those lentils for a little lentil show and tell. So I wanted to add them. Mmm. That was very tasty. So I could add to that. I could add some um, balsamic vinegar. I want to give you like a little rundown of what you can add to add some flavor. So it says salt and pepper. You could add a little salt if you want. If you want to add it, sprinkle it on top. Sprinkle on top of your bowl, not the whole thing. Um, lemon juice, lime juice. I wouldn't add lime juice to that. Balsamic vinegar is really good. Any vinegar. If you have, now this would go well with that, red wine vinegar. And just pour that in there. I bet that's really yummy. You could add some other chopped sun-dried tomatoes um, to it. So there's all kinds of things you can do to reduce the sodium in your diet. But truly, the number one thing is to pay attention to what you put in your mouth. And then there are things that I feel like I don't need to say, like probably eating chips not the best idea um, for many reasons but you know I always used to tell people as a dietitian they don't people don't need me to tell them that croissants are not so good for them or donuts or pecan rolls or whatever the thing is you know you don't need the dietitian to tell you that but I am happy to reinforce some of the ideas and really keep them so that you remember that you can replace your health. Your health is one of the things that you need to be responsible for and you need to take the steps to make it work for you. If there are things I use that you don't like, don't use them. You know, you don't have to eat food you don't like. That was what, what Dr. Boyson said. Choose the foods that you like that feed you. And I think that's so beautiful because you don't want to eat food that doesn't make it for you because it what what good is that you know I, you know the joke is if I had known I was going to live so long I might have eaten healthier but healthier doesn't always taste so good so you know do I want to live longer eating healthier food if it doesn't taste good and it is a process to get off processed food um, it and it's funny because when I do which isn't that often just like, oh, it's so salty and I just taste it. And I have the things that I sometimes use I in like emergencies, it doesn't happen that often, but it's like sometimes those little bags of Indian food, I like the way they taste, but they are so salty that I have to add as much fresh food to it as possible to make it palatable. In fact, my husband likes the, um, the, curried garbanzo beans and that's like a super easy dinner but what I do is I cook garbanzo beans or chickpeas and I add them to that and they have zero sodium in them and that way you can cut the sodium in processed foods but it is a little bit of work so um, I highly encourage you to take care of your health to take care of what you put in your mouth be responsible for that nobody else can do it for you and I welcome any that you have now that I've made a complete mess of my kitchen for you and happily happily yeah so we just have um one question that was from earlier when you started using your instapot and you were adding the yeah. leeks and um, other vegetables and you're not using oil are you adding a little bit of water or anything else to saute those okay so I like to do what's called the dry saute I don't think I invented it, but I've been doing it for many, many years where you start off with nothing in the pot, nothing, just the leeks or onions or whatever. And if you start with liquid in there, you're steaming those vegetables. If you start with nothing in there, you are sweating them and they are cooking in their own juices. So I do not add any liquid until they need it. So once the liquid comes out, so if you've ever cooked mushrooms, which I do fairly often, 
If you cook eight ounces of mushrooms in the Instant Pot, you can cook just three tablespoons of liquid because they produce their own liquid. So you don't need that much liquid. And what happens with the Instant Pot is when it's under pressure, the liquid gets infused into the vegetable and helps break that cell wall. And so I make a recipe called Big Time Broccoli where I put in sprigs of thyme or dried thyme and just a little liquid and the thyme flavor goes through the cell wall in the broccoli and infuses it with flavor. So it's not necessary to use a lot of liquid but you do need to do something to keep it from sticking on the bottom. So what I usually do is I'll add the liquid that I was going to add anyway in making the soup or stew or whatever I'm making. So it's a good question because I don't often, you know, I joke that, oh, if I'm going to eat oil, I want to save it for chocolate. Um, and for me, that's, you know, where I want to see my, if I had a fat bank of calories, that's where I'd love to see it go but I don't necessarily, you know, need to use it. And a lot of recipes start with one tablespoon or two tablespoons of oil. And while oil doesn't necessarily affect hypertension, having too high a blood sugar, too high a cholesterol, I mean, hypertension is related to heart disease. And if it goes unchecked, it can lead to strokes and heart attacks and very bad things. So, you know, you want to remember, this is like one whole body. When something goes wrong with your car, yes, it's my brakes, but it can make your car unusable. So you want to remember, this is the whole thing from top to bottom, from toes to head and everything in between and all the way out so that everything affects everything else. So having high blood pressure is not a like, oh, I have a little high blood pressure. I'll just take the medication. Even if you do take the medication, you still probably make as many great choices as you can for your health and well-being. So. Um, somebody asked what type of or brand of fermenting lid were you using? Oh, <laughs> I have many, but I'll show you the one that, that you saw. It's just like a, a little like nipple lid. It's silicone. Um, I don't think I have the actual, hang on a second. Uh, this is a different one. This doesn't come in this box, but this was another one that I got. I use anything I have at my disposal. This one has a, this has, you need to use this with something that has a hole in it. And so I don't use these as much. They have, you put a little water in there. I don't use these as much because I don't have so many lids that have holes, but this one is easy and inexpensive. If you email me, I can tell you exactly what it is. And I think they come in a pack of six. I also use them after I have taken them off. I use a very cool thing with them. That I have one here. I use a special top um, that has, oh, I put it on something today. It has a grommet, not a grommet, like a gasket inside and it's a plastic top. So after you take this off, you want to put something on and fermentation tends to be a little acidic. And what will happen is the ferment will start eating through your lid so what I usually do is I'll either put a piece of wax paper here or I'll use those plastic lids that have a little gasket in them. I, I, you don't need a special fermentation lid, but I have found these to be easy and portable and um, they work pretty well. I mean, they're not the best ones, but they work just fine. So any other questions? Because I'm happy to answer. Um, I'm not seeing any come in, but um, I okay. do have a second poll that I would love to launch. Um, and I'm going to do that right now. And while everybody has the opportunity to fill that out, I just want to mention that if you would like to be added to our 
list for Mendenoma Health Alliance where we email out information about upcoming programs. Um, we offer a lot of classes that help with um, lifestyle changes for anybody experiencing chronic conditions. Um, one specifically that was developed by Stanford that we teach in our community and it's held online. So things like that we are oftentimes um, promoting in the community. And so if you're interested in being on our email list to learn more about those opportunities and future workshops, then go ahead and send me your, your email address in the chat box. And um, you can send a private message to me in the chat box. My name is Micheline, and we'll make sure to add you to our list so that you have um, future updates. And people can donate to Mendenoma Health Alliance, right? Thank you, Joe. Yes, absolutely. We, <laughs> we accept, thank you. <laughs> um, we accept PayPal donations. You can actually just go to our website, Mendenoma Health org and I'm going to put that in our chat box and in Mend on mendenomahealth.org you should see a donate today button at the top of the home screen so and I would like to thank Mendenoma Health for having me do this because I love it yeah this is great I'm looking forward to when we can do them in person again oh that'd be lovely yeah so um, I don't think we've done an in-person one with you, Jill, because I think we started with you when we went virtual. <laughs> yes, we did, but we'll get back to it, I hope. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to give another 10, 15 seconds on the poll. Um, and I don't see any more quite, oh, that looks like a comment. That was the best class. Good job, Jill. You are so informative and fun. Um, <laughs> all at the same time. Thank you so much and hope to see a lot more. And I just want to say I had, there's another participant in here that's a friend of mine and I sent her a message that said, I always laugh when Jill is presenting because you have really great, like, you're very witty. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to end that poll. And if there aren't any more questions, then, um, then I will go ahead and um, end the workshop for today, oh. if that's okay. okay. Oh, Somebody well. asked, where will the recipes be posted? And I will send them to you and you tell them where they'll be posted. Yeah, we're gonna have them on our website. We have an events calendar that you can access on one of our, it's on the drop down menu of our, um, at the top of our homepage. And our calendar has the days that events were hosted. And you can find this workshop. So today's April 7th. You just go to April 7th on that calendar. And we will have a link to a PDF so that you can download those recipes on your own um, computer. And people can download the slides too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Or so something, can, right? Yeah, so so we can put the, um, the slides up on the website, no problem. And Janice has added the direct link in the chat box for anybody who's interested. Thank you, Janice. Perfect, and I, I thank you all for attending and I thank you, Micheline and Janice, for having me. All right, well, everybody have a wonderful night. Thank you so much.